Now, as you'll probably no doubt remember, last year's Obi-Wan Kenobi series on Disney Plus not only gave us the return of Ewan McGregor as the titular character, but it also, ever so briefly, gave us the return of Liam Neeson as the Force Ghost of Qui-Gon Jinn. But even though there have been talks or rumors of a potential second season of the show, with Ewan himself even saying he'd be up for it, don't expect to see Qui-Gon Jinn in it if it ever does come to pass, which, in my opinion, more of Obi-Wan and him, and training to be a Force ghost, would be about the only reason to ever do a second season. Anyway, don't expect to see Qui-Gon in it, because Liam Neeson recently said that, despite enjoying his time back and his reunion with Ewan, that that's it, he's done with Star Wars. But that wasn't all he said, because he followed it up by saying... There's so many spin-offs of Star Wars, it's diluting it to me, and it's taken away the mystery and the magic in a weird way. And well, he's certainly not the first one to say something like this, and I'm not just talking about the complaints of disgruntled fans who have been saying this or similar things for a while now, but a few other Star Wars actors have echoed similar sentiments about Star Wars, maybe not being quite so special anymore, and even Bob Iger himself, CEO of Disney, said a few years back that they may have put out a bit too much a bit too fast when it came to Star Wars. And though I'm sure there will be, or has been, plenty of videos dunking on Disney Star Wars because of what Liam had to say here, that it's proof it's dying because another former actor said it's lost its magic or it's becoming diluted, even though in all reality it's just the opinion of someone who's admitted before he's not much of a Star Wars fan in general, that he doesn't really watch it, and in a 2021 interview with Collider he didn't even know at that time that Star Wars was doing spin-off shows until asked if he'd consider being in one, which he enthusiastically said, yes, he'd return. And look, I'm not trying to dismiss his opinion or say it carries no weight at all. I think he has a rather unique perspective here, as someone who was, of course, a part of the Phantom Menace and all the hype around that back in the day. And now he gets to compare that to what the franchise and fandom are like some 20 plus years later, after you could say kind of being off the Star Wars grid for most of that time. Again, he admits he's not much of a fan, doesn't go to the conventions or that sort of thing, and he's known for many other roles as well. Basically, his career existed before Star Wars, and it moved on pretty smoothly after. He's not only known as Qui-Gon Jinn these days, how likely more people know him from Taken rather than Star Wars. Though it should be noted that, yes, he did voice Qui-Gon Jinn in a couple episodes of The Clone Wars, so he wasn't entirely gone from it for the whole time. Anyway, what I'm saying here is that I'd love to hear him elaborate on why he feels this way, why he feels it's diluted now or like it's lost its magic, compared to back in the day. Because even though, yes, some will no doubt agree with him and again try to dunk on Star Wars, even though they would have probably ignored or dismissed him if he'd said positive things about Star Wars, I also know plenty will disagree, especially as we sit here on the verge of The Mandalorian Season 3, which has, I'd argue, become the most popular and successful Star Wars content under Disney. And I mean that relatively speaking, because yes, obviously the sequel trilogy was very well known across pretty much the entire world, and technically it made a ton of money. But its popularity and love for it and its money-making potential waned as the trilogy went on, while people seemed to only get more and more excited for and vested in The Mandalorian. Its upcoming release is very, very anticipated. Certainly not movie levels of anticipation, but it's certainly up there. Anyway, all that said, let's take a step back and set aside our biases both ways, both positively and negatively, or at least I'll try to do that. And let's ask if Liam Neeson is right here. Is Star Wars deluded and devoid of the mystery and magic because of how much of it we now get? Are the spin-off shows ruining it somehow? And honestly, I don't know if I'm perfectly qualified to give my opinion on this, or if I should be disqualified because of my own experience with and dedication to the franchise. Keeping in mind, I've been a Star Wars fan since 1983 when I was five and saw Return of the Jedi for the first time. And that, starting in 1991 with the release of Heir to the Empire, I've personally consumed a rather steady diet of Star Wars content, albeit a lot of that in the form of books, comics, and games, for over 30 years at this point. And I get asked rather often if I'm tired of or getting tired of talking about Star Wars virtually every day. And honestly, the answer is, somehow, no, I'm not. Mainly because somewhere along the way, Star Wars became something more to me, and I don't mean... When I started doing YouTube, I'm talking way before that. It became something that I really got into, something more akin to a hobby that I have rather than something I just occasionally watch when a new movie or show comes out or play when a new game comes out. 
And for me and others like me, or from our point of view, there is indeed so much to always talk about in regards to it. There's not only, yes, a lot of potentially good stuff on the horizon, but also plenty of history in universe and out surrounding the franchise, as well as a lot of meaning behind it all that can be discussed at length and depth, which I love to do. I love talking about what it all means and relating it to real life. There's also a lot more of the fun and frivolous things that can be discussed or debated just for the heck of it. In other words, for some of us, as I was just saying, Star Wars is something more than just some movies we've seen a bunch of times and really liked, or a show or a game that comes out here or there that we'll play or watch. It's something we really never get sick of, almost no matter how much they crank out, and we'll probably tolerate a dud show or movie here and there, and hope for better down the road before we'd ever truly move on. Which isn't to say there hasn't been quite a few um, duds lately that have made hardcore fans give up and move on. Certainly the hardcore fan base has taken a hit as of late. Only that for most people, even a good portion of those who would consider themselves or classify themselves as Star Wars fans, it is just something they, yes, love in their own way and are fans of, but only really think about or care about or get into when a new movie or show is on the horizon. Otherwise, it's not so much on their radar... Certainly not something they're talking about nearly daily. And if there are many such things on the horizon for the more casual fan, let's call them, yeah, they'll feel far less special to them, far less like an event when the next one comes out right after the previous one. Especially compared to, say, when movies only came out every few years or a decade between trilogies, and that was all the Star Wars content they'd get or care about in a large span of time. On top of that, if these multiple shows a year, or frequent film releases, assuming we get back to that, if they're not great, if they don't feel like anything all that special in terms of quality, it's going to make their constant arrival not only feel less and less like anything remotely resembling an event, but it's going to start feeling like just another show you're supposed to watch because it's Star Wars and you're a fan of it, so of course you want to watch it, right? Or do they? Because how many Star Wars fans truly love Star Wars in and of itself and really get into it, and how many love it because, again, it's just something they watch when it's there, because it's generally a fun, cool spectacle, and maybe they have some fond childhood memories attached to it. And if it's there all the time, will that really increase their interest or decrease it, especially, again, if it's not something that's all that great in the first place? And no, I'm not saying there aren't a lot of hardcore fans out there. There's millions of them. Only that for every hardcore fan, there are many, many more casual ones who don't get into it nearly the same way, who aren't going to keep up with everything unless it's exceptional, or is leading somewhere and thus feels like they have to keep up. The fear of missing out, much like how Marvel does it with the MCU, or did it until Phase 4, which, no surprise, had a drop in viewership, because it didn't feel like it was leading anywhere. But all that's a discussion for another time, and what I'm getting at here is that Liam Neeson, though someone who, again, has been in Star Wars and could certainly offer a very unique perspective, he is, in a way, with not being a huge Star Wars fan and not really being involved with it, he can kind of also give us the more casual perspective here, right? He can see why there might be a bit more than the average person is going to care about. That when The Phantom Menace was coming out, the world held its breath with anticipation, as it held its breath again for The Force Awakens, but that even though there is a ton of hype around these new shows, especially The Mandalorian, and there was a lot for Kenobi as well, it's not anywhere near the same thing anymore. It's lost some of that special feeling or magic by there being so much of it. I'd even go so far as to say, as I've argued before, that The Mandalorian has sort of transcended Star Wars, that it's not popular because it's a great Star Wars show, which isn't to say it isn't a great Star Wars show, but because people have gotten into the show itself, and sometimes despite it being Star Wars. Because, and I know this is anecdotal, but I know or have met or heard from many people who say they're not really Star Wars fans at all. They don't really even like the franchise. But still, they enjoy The Mandalorian, and mainly because of Grogu, who, surprise surprise, is back for Season 3. In other words, I don't know that The Mandalorian is making Star Wars fans as much as it's making Mandalorian fans, which sure could be a gateway into other Star Wars shows for them, no doubt about it. There will be some crossover, there will be people who check out other Star Wars because of The Mandalorian, especially when, you know, the characters from it just so happen to pop up and take over another show entirely for a couple episodes. But anyway, to wrap this up, I think Liam Neeson is right, but I don't think it's in any way a type of condemnation of Star Wars. I think it's just obvious that the more of something there is, the less mysterious and magical and special it's going to feel. 
And I do think for some fans, the more casual ones, perhaps there is a bit too much of it. And for some other fans, the more hardcore fans, there's no such thing as too much. But the key will always be the same when it comes to the future of Star Wars, no matter what kind of fan you are. It has to be good. People have to want to watch it because it's something enjoyable in and of itself. You can't rely on the Star Wars name to bring in an audience, especially when you ask that audience to watch multiple times a year when you never did before. Well, that's all I've got for you this time. Now it's your turn to take to the comments below and tell me what you think about all this. Tell me what you think about what Liam Neeson had to say and do you agree with him? Is there just too much Star Wars? Does it no longer feel special or is it not magical and mystical anymore? Whatever you think, leave those comments below and let's talk some Star Wars. And until next time, thanks for watching.